Kerr will use the forthcoming United National General Assembly to canvas support for the reform of the UN Security Council. Now, the president was giving an update on the country's foreign policy in a meeting with foreign ambassadors and high commissioners at the union buildings in Pretoria. We now cross back to our contributing editor, Vuyam Vogel, who is now standing by with a South African Minister of State Security, Minister David Matlobo. Vuyam, back to you. Well, thanks very much, Alicia. Yes, indeed, I do have the Minister of Intelligence, Minister Mahlobo, who incidentally just had a conversation with uh, a Syria's ambassador um, to South Africa. Maybe he'll uh, tell us a thing or two about that meeting that he just had, Minister. Well, uh, thank you very much, Vuya, and to our viewers at home. Well, uh, like the president has said, uh, we are interacting with various uh, ambassadors here yeah? on matters of uh, mutual interest. I've met with a number of them, you know, Americans, Russians, and so forth. But all of them, we just um, sharing notes, agreeing that um, well, how should we cooperate so that um, we can ensure that this world uh, has peace and stability so that development can be able to thrive. You know that uh, the president has expressed views about the situation in Syria and uh, we have existing diplomatic relations with them and uh, on areas of cooperation these are the things that we're going to strengthen so that uh, working with uh, through the United Nations we should be able to find peace for the people of Syria and the entire Middle East. So no particular or, or particularly strong issue that he raised with you? Well, there are no issues except that uh, we're agreeing that there are a war-torn country um, and the conditions that are existing in the Middle East, there's too much movement that is happening of people. And at the very same time, uh, we need to put systems to ensure that uh, when people visit Syria, either for pilgrimage, whether for business, whether for ter tourism, or even our own organization in South Africa that are providing humanitarian relief. You know South Africans are there, including people in your own uh, profession. South African media, people are always reporting around the world. We need to be able to do that. But we're also sharing notes to say how do you deal with this phenomenon called ISIS? Because ISIS has the ability to recruit all over the world. Those are the messages that uh, we are sharing to say so that we can be able to ensure that our countries are not affected adversely by this movement of our people in a global environment. Well, and what some people thought was very alarmist, mm. the United, Na United States mm. um, last week issued this warning mm. and everybody was like, what the hell is going on? Uh, are we under threat suddenly? Um, what, what actually happened there? Well, we've raised the issues right now. I, I had an opportunity to meet with the American leadership here in the embassy. It's a very unfortunate that uh, they chose to announce this particular issue because generally we've shared information. It's information about certain individuals that are saying things about the American government, like they do say things about us. Wherever they sit, they thought it's a serious risk. And in our own assessment, because we look at the same information, we said the, the risk is actually not there. There is no immediate threat. And we have agreed with them to say in future, these matters must be handled very differently. Because intelligence services all over the world, including themselves, we do cooperate on these matters, on matters of cooperation, do joint operation. But as I've said before, South Africa remains stable. There is no immediate threat that is them. But South Africa will continue not to be complacent because there is no country in the world that can say, you know what, we are sure we're going to be safe. Even big democracies with strong armies, big armaments, they get to be attacked. Therefore, a South African government will continue to work within the uh, security architecture, whether of the UN Security Council, where we look at terrorism issues, whether the African Union Peace and Security Council, whether the SADC one. We'll share the issues, who is moving from which country, what are they up to, how is their funding, we will look also on the question of their recruitment, but also we also look at the question who's supplying arms, because that's how you can be able to deal with the issues of uh, terrorism. But governments all over the world must then address the fundamental questions around poverty, unemployment, inequality, because those are the breeding grounds for this kind of 
uh, extremism, in terms of ideological extremism. And as long as you don't deal with those particular issues, there will always be those elements within our communities. Now, there were reports over the past couple of days of uh, people who have come back, mm. um, reports saying some of them were disappointed at uh, the treatment that they got from their would-be um, recruiters. But mm. some people or experts expressing a view that um, um, those are not aren't people we should be welcoming back. In fact, if anything, we should be very worried that there are people who, who have been in touch um, with terrorist organizations and uh, who may just be back in the country simply to continue the mission that we thought or they are, they are claiming missions that um, they are claiming may have been aborted or they are unhappy about. Can you assure us that we have nothing to worry about from the people who have come back to the country um, having had contact uh, perhaps with some terrorist organizations? Well, we should be able to to actually send a warning to South Africans to say, let's not generalize. Uh, when people visit certain countries, like if you visit a country that has an epidemic, an example, a country affected by Ebola, every country, every citizen who comes from those particular regions, immediately you come back in our post of entry, you will do a normal screening, so that if there are health matters, you get to be treated and other particular issues. In this case, South Africans, like any citizen in the world, they have a freedom of movement. They move around the Middle East for business, they move for tourism, you know that some of our communities are religious people. They move for pilgrimage in that particular kind of the world. But our own NGOs, they are moving around the world providing support. Therefore, people who go to the Middle East, especially the countries that are actually war-torn, they are actually having elements of radicalism that is happening there, they will expect that a responsible government immediately touch on our soil, will pull you aside, will be able to do an interview, assess the material we are actually looking at. We will not stop doing that because because if people go to Syria, they go to take, it does not necessarily mean they are terrorists. But we must be able to ascertain, have they made contact? Have they not been recruited? Even when they come back, they must know that for their own sake and interest, we'll continue to monitor them. There is nothing abnormal. I can tell you we have done a number of operations since we caught the girl from Cape Town. That was an evidence that was there. Everyone who goes to the Middle East, you come to the airport, you can even do your random sport. We'll pick you up, check what are you doing, what you're up to. And then when there is no evidence linking you with these particular positions, we'll release you. But if there is evidence that is actually linking you to these particular activities, we'll be able to actually allow the law enforcement agencies to take its course because you can't join a war you don't know. You can't be involved in issues of foreign military assistance. You can't train those people without the authorization. You can also be involved in the acts of espionage. Therefore, it's a normal operation. South Africans must know we'll do our best, but we are relying on society to raise these issues because some of these children, when they get to disappear, they have parents, they have relatives. If your child disappears more than 24 hours, 48 hours, you don't alert the law enforcement agencies will not be able to do that. But in terms of the activities of terror networks here, we are monitoring in terms of uh, the groups that have the names from the UN and the AU, monitoring their planning, monitoring their fin funding in terms of the financial intelligence uh, center that we have, including the interceptions, we'll have to do them. Minister, thank you very much for uh, clarifying uh, those issues uh, for us. Thank mm. you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister um, of Intelligence.